Hello, and welcome to this presentation, Measuring Cables with the FPC 1500. In this presentation, we'll show you how to make basic measurements of coaxial cables using the Vector Network Analyzer mode of a Rodian Schwartz FPC 1500 Spectrum Analyzer. This presentation covers the essential information needed to make basic cable measurements with the FPC, but please see the separate presentation, Understanding VNA's Cable Measurements, if you're interested in learning more about this topic. We'll start with a brief review of cable measurements. This term is commonly used to describe measurement of connectorized coaxial cables, and this will be the focus of our presentation. All cables attenuate or reduce the power of signals passing through them, and this cable loss is sometimes also referred to as insertion loss. The amount of attenuation is a function of two things, the length of the cable and the frequency of the signal passing through it. Loss almost always increases linearly with length. If we double the length of a cable, the loss is also doubled. Loss, therefore, can be expressed in units of dB per meter, or foot. But more importantly, most cables also have increasing loss as the frequency increases. Cable loss can therefore be reported as a single value in dB for the entire measured cable, and it can also be given as the amount of attenuation or loss as a function of frequency in either tabular or graphical format. Although there are many ways of measuring cables, the most common and the most accurate is using an instrument called a Vector Network Analyzer, or VNA. There are two ways to measure cables with the VNA mode of the FPC 1500. The first is so-called one-port cable measurements, in which only one end of the cable is connected to the FPC. The other method is two-port measurements, in which both ends of the cable are connected to the instrument. We'll cover both of these methods in this presentation, starting with one-port measurements. In one-port measurements, a tracking generator is used to inject a signal into a cable. This is a generator which is built into the analyzer and whose frequency is swept over a user-defined range. The far end of the cable is either left open or is terminated with a short. Either of these conditions will cause the signal reaching the end of the cable to be reflected back towards the source. At the source port, the amount of received reflected power is compared to the known transmitted power, and the ratio or difference between these quantities is the cable loss, which is normally expressed in units of dB and which is normally plotted as a function of frequency. There are six basic steps in making one port cable loss measurements configuring the tracking generator, configuring the frequency and span, performing a one-port calibration, selecting the cable measurement or termination type, connecting the cable under test, and viewing and or analyzing the results. In the next few minutes, we'll go through each of these step by step. Cable measurements on the FPC 1500 are made in vector network analyzer mode. To enter this mode, press the mode hard key on the front of the FPC and then choose Vector Network Analyzer. Next, press the Measure Hard key and choose One Port Cable Loss. To configure the FPC's tracking generator, press the Measure Hard key and then Source. For cable measurements, we want Tracking Generator mode, in which the output of the generator is a CW signal whose frequency is coupled to the measurement frequency. That is, the source output frequency sweeps at the same rate as the measurement. The output power of the generator is also configurable in units of dBm using the level key, with the maximum output power level being 0 dBm. Care should be taken not to set the tracking generator level too low if measuring cables with significant attenuation, as this can lead to inaccurate results. We also need to specify the frequency range over which the cable will be tested. This should cover the intended operating frequency range. To define the frequency range, press the Frequency Hard key and enter the Start and Stop frequencies. The Span key can also be used to enter these as Center and Span instead. The number of measurement or trace points over the span can also be specified by pressing the Sweep Hard key and then adjusting the number of points. A greater number of points will provide greater detail, particularly over wide frequency ranges. Next, we'll discuss how to connect the cable under test. For both calibration and for measurement, 
the cable under test can be connected to the FPC in two different ways. It can either be directly connected to the Gen Output port on the front of the FPC, or it can be connected to this port using a short DUT cable. There are several reasons why using a DUT cable is helpful. The first is for cases when the cable under test's connector is difficult to access, such as when it terminates in an enclosure, or is attached to a tower or mast. Another reason is that using a DUT cable can reduce wear and tear and or mechanical stress on the analyzer port. But before making any one-port measurements, a one-port calibration should be performed. This process involves sequentially attaching an open, a short, and a match, or load, to the location where the cable under test will be connected. These standards can be in the form of discrete standards, or may be combined into a calibration T. In addition to these manually switched standards, electronic calibration units can also be used. These switch their internal standards in and out automatically and are controlled by the FPC. Regardless of which type of standards are used, the process is started by pressing the measure hard key, pressing calibrate, and one port selective span, and then selecting the calibration kit. Next, simply follow the prompts to run the calibration process. If the cable under test will be directly connected to the FBC, then the calibration standards, or calibration unit, should also be connected directly to the port on the FPC. If, on the other hand, a DUT cable is used between the FPC and the cable under test, then the calibration standards are connected to the end of the DUT cable, since this is where the cable under test will be attached. Note that calibrating at this point will remove the effect of the DUT cable from the cable measurement. The next step is choosing the cable measurement or termination type. If we choose cable loss, then the end of the cable should be left open or unterminated. Note that an open may also be created by attaching an open calibration standard. This type of cable loss measurement begins automatically. If we choose cable loss short plus open divided by two, the cable will be measured twice, once with a short and once with an open. Attach a short when prompted and press continue, and then leave the cable open or connect an open when prompted and press continue again. After the process is completed, the results will be displayed. Here's an example of measuring cable loss using only an open termination. We can easily see that loss increases with increasing frequency, which is typical for cable measurements. An average numerical value of cable loss over this frequency range, here 0.49 dB, is also automatically calculated and displayed. When we measure using both short and open terminations, the result is three traces. Green is the measurement made with the short, orange is the measurement made with the open, and yellow is the average of these two measurements. Here we see an unusually large difference between the open and short traces from about 2.5 to 2.7 gigahertz, which likely indicates a poor quality short. The result should be very similar if a high quality short is used. Now that we've covered one port cable measurements, let's look at how to make two port cable measurements. Two port measurements are generally preferred over one port measurements in two cases. The first is when there's easy access to both ends of the cable, and the second is when the cable has very high loss, more than about 15 or 20 dB. High levels of loss tend to produce less accurate one port measurements. For example, here we have more than 20 dB of loss, and therefore the one port measurement results should be viewed with caution. Making a two port measurement of the same cable provides a much more accurate and repeatable test result. The steps in making two port or transmission cable measurements are configuring the tracking generator, configuring the frequency and span, performing a normalization, connecting the cable, and viewing or analyzing the results. Most of these steps are the same as for one port measurements, so on the next few slides we'll concentrate on the differences between one port and two port methods. To make two port cable measurements in VNA mode, press the measure hard key and then select transmission S21. In some two port cable measurements, the cable under test is simply directly connected to both analyzer ports. 
If, however, DUT cables are used to connect the cable under test to the analyzer, then a normalization should be performed to remove the influence of the DUT cables on the measurement. Normalization is run by pressing the Measure Hard key and selecting Calibrate Normalize S21. After a through is used to connect the DUT cables, press Continue to run the normalization. Note that normalization should be rerun if the frequency range or number of trace points has been changed. Now let's look at a typical 2-port or S21 cable measurement. Here again we see a plot of loss as a function of frequency. In order to analyze this in more detail, we can use markers and marker functions. Markers are enabled using the marker hard key and can be used to examine the frequency-specific characteristics of a cable. Up to six markers can be placed on a trace, and these can be either absolute markers or delta markers, which show the difference between marker values. You can toggle between types using marker type. Another marker hard key is used to automatically place markers on the peak or minimum values of the displayed trace. Let's end with a brief summary. Cable measurement is primarily concerned with the loss of a cable as a function of frequency and or the average overall loss in a given cable. There are two ways to measure cable loss. The first is one port measurements in which one end of the cable is shorted or open and the resulting reflection is measured by the FPC. The other method is two port measurements also called transmission or S21 measurements. These are more precise and may be necessary if cable loss is very high, but they can be difficult to perform on installed cables. Calibration or normalization is also needed to obtain accurate measurement results. Cable loss measurements are usually displayed in the form of a loss versus frequency plot, and markers can be helpful in obtaining detailed numeric results. This concludes our presentation, Measuring Cables with the FPC 1500. If you'd like more information about network measurements, cable measurements, or spectrum and network analyzers from Rodian and Schwartz, please see the links in the video description. Thanks for watching.